Hello, it is October 7th where I live and the end of the season. It is my first season growing things hydroponically outside. And I have grown a garden lots of times, but this is the first time I've done it in hydroponics as well as my regular garden. And if you want to see how that step turned out, go check out some of my other videos. The tomatoes did amazing. Um, but it's a lot of work and I'm not sure I'm going to do it again. A lot of the things I ran into, uh, another fellow named Brent pointed out to me that it's just kind of stuff that goes wrong when you grow things hydroponically in general. And I don't know why I didn't realize that, but it's kind of obvious in retrospect. So these are five things that were surprising to me, growing things hydroponically outdoors. Now, by the way, side note, somebody told me, somebody commented on one of my videos, don't stare directly into the camera because it makes them nervous. But I'm not sure where else to look, like off into the distance, wistfully. Anyway, not the point. My point is, these are five things that I'm going to share with you that in retrospect may seem obvious, but were surprising to me because I had only had experience previously with soil. So if this is your first time doing it, or you're planning on growing things hydroponically in your garden, and like I said, I'm just a hobbyist, so I'm not talking about commercial stuff or anything like that, but this is your first time you're going to do it, um, maybe this will be helpful for you so you won't be surprised like I was, and you can just kind of be mentally prepared and prepared for the things that occur when you grow things hydroponically. So, enjoy! Blossom end rot was absolutely shocking to me because I had the exact right amount of calcium in the water. Well, it turns out it's not just a matter of having the calcium available, it's the inability of the plant to move the calcium from the root zone to the developing fruit where it needs to be that causes the blossom end rot. And some varieties of tomatoes, like these sauce tomatoes, are more prone to blossom end rot than other varieties of tomatoes. Um, add that to a whole bunch of other factors that kind of created a perfect storm for blossom end rot to occur. I had inconsistent watering, I had super hot days, the plants were stressed, and you would think that all of these factors could be eliminated by growing things hydroponically. Well, maybe if you were inside in a controlled environment, but outside where, you know, it was 90 degrees for weeks on end, I didn't have the control that I needed to kind of keep the temperatures down and everything that else that I needed to do. So if I did it again, I would plant different varieties that were less susceptible to blossom end rot. This was kind of a mislabeled bag, so I don't know exactly what these were. My other tomatoes, the boxcar willies, they did fine. It was just these that were kind of unfortunately susceptible. So a lot of the fruit on this plant was lost. I go out to the garden one day, and the bucket is full of water to the top, and it's running over the edge onto the ground. Instead of going out the drain line, and back into the reservoir like it's supposed to. And this was because the drain line was clogged. And now it had done this several days before, but I didn't know it. I just thought the plants were drinking lots of water because the reservoir was dry every day. And it stressed my plants out and they would get wilted and I was thinking, this is unsustainable, I can't do this, until I finally figured out that it was because the drain line was clogged and not because they were actually drinking 12 gallons of water a day. So, this is just kind of general hydroponics maintenance. You need to make sure your drain lines are free so the water can flow through them, and your feeder lines have the water, are able to give them the water they need, as, and everything can drain out like it's supposed to. What I did to keep the drain lines clear is I kept a chopstick in the garden, and whenever the drain line appeared slow or clogged, I would jam that chopstick in there and swish it around until the water came flowing out again. So, in retrospect, this is obvious. It's just general maintenance. You're like, of course the drain lines might get plugged, of course the feeder lines might get plugged, of course they do. biggest concern I had about growing things hydroponically outside for the first time was heat. I know that heat is an enemy of hydroponics. It causes oxygen to become less readily available in the water, and it, all sorts of other problems occur when this happens, like the roots can't take up the oxygen they need, they root, or they rot, they get bacteria in there, um, just all sorts of problems. So I wrapped the buckets in this foil bubble wrap to reflect the sun and keep them dark and as cool as possible. I buried my reservoir in the ground, I covered it with foam and mylar, and I put in aeration stones, I added hydrogen peroxide every couple weeks just to kind of do everything I could to stave off any sort of heat problems. And I don't know if it was a combination of all these things together that made everything work out, or if it was just because it didn't really matter because these are Dutch buckets and the roots are not continually submerged in the water. The water was hot to the touch by the end of the day. It was super warm. It was cool in the morning, but by the end of the day it was, it was, it was hot. Um, it was surprising to me that it didn't seem to be as much as a problem as I thought it was. And like I said, maybe it was a combination of all the things I did that kept them healthy, or maybe it just didn't matter because the roots are not continually submerged in the water. In any case, I made sure the water stayed clean and clear, 
And if there was any signs of algae growth or anything in the water, then I would dump it and put in new water and put it into hydrogen peroxide just to kind of keep the system as clean as possible. So, not as much of a problem as I thought it would be. The vines on these tomato plants were huge. They were not necessarily huger than the soil-grown tomatoes, but they were pretty big. And they were kind of crazy coming out of all sorts of places. I had to tie them up. And this is, you know, something you have to do with tomatoes growing in soil anyway. This vine broke. That tomato right there was load-bearing, so I didn't pick it. And somehow the tomatoes down the vine didn't die, and they ripened, and I picked them later. Um, but I was surprised at how much water these things sucked up. I had to fill the reservoir every day. They would drink four, five, six gallons a day, even seven gallons a day when it was super hot. And I was filling this thing up every day. My reservoir was just too small. Like I didn't expect them to drink as much water as they did. So if you do Dutch bucket tomatoes or something else outside where it's super hot, get a bigger reservoir than you think you might need. Or make sure that your reservoir is big enough so that you don't have to spend as much time filling the reservoir every day or get some sort of automated system. Just uh, know that they may drink more water than you expect. The last thing that surprised me was that these things tasted amazing. I've had people tell me that hydroponically grown vegetables don't have any flavor, they don't have any taste, blah blah blah, whatever. Boxcar Willie tomatoes are some of my new favorite tomatoes. These things tasted amazing. Now. If you plant these, know that you, if you plant a good variety, that you can get good fruit off of them. You can get good flavor out of a hydroponically grown tomato or other vegetable. I've done lettuce and other things like that, and they all taste great to me. Uh, they didn't necessarily do far and away better than my soil-grown tomatoes, and they didn't necessarily taste better than they would have if they were grown in soil, and vice versa. The soil-grown tomatoes didn't necessarily taste better than these. So this is just another tool that you can use to grow things. Um, if you choose to do it, I wish you the best of luck. Good luck growing things outdoors, good luck growing things indoors, whatever you choose to do. I uh, hope it works out well for you, and thanks for watching.